All right, our uh, our next storyteller uh, coming to the stage. This is her her second time here. David was so over the moon when he heard her story uh, at our other little show. Um, I knew immediately she was going to end up here on this stage, and uh, we discussed all kinds of things about how I should introduce her. And um, at the last second, she said, "Say nothing, Paul. Just get me up there." So, ladies and gentlemen, one of my favorites, Chris Spengler, right here. Thank you, Paul. I decided my dating strategy would be this. When an unknown woman came to my door and knocked, I would open it. <laughs> now, you may think that this is a little crazy, but at the time, I was working lots of hours, and I was busy helping my elderly parents. I really didn't have a lot of time or energy for dating. But I wanted the universe to know I was open to it. So I had the strategy. Now, <clears throat> It may not surprise you that two or more years pass by and nothing <laughs> happened. But then one day, I opened my mailbox and inside was a white folded piece of paper with my name on it, Chris. And I opened it up and it said, if you are interested in going on a date with me, please call the number signed Rebecca Brown. Whoa, this was it. My virtual knock on the door. There was only one mystery. Who is Rebecca Brown? I, I had no idea, and I hadn't been out in a long, long time, so I had no idea how she might have met me or heard of me, <sighs> but uh, she did want to date me. Um, <laughs> and and I, I have this problem calling people the first time even when I know who they are, and the little voice kept saying, but Chris, she wants to date you. And so I didn't wait my usual month to call her back. <laughs> or even a week. I called her the next day. And she answered the phone. And I could tell right away that she was sick. And I offered to call another time. But when she heard who it was, she said, no, no, let's talk. Awesome. And so we talked. And the more we talked, the more I really liked her. And I was really looking forward to going on a date with her. And the more she talked to me, the more she realized I was the wrong Chris. <laughs> so it turns out that there is another lesbian named Chris, spelled the same way, who lives two doors away from me. <sighs> but since she hadn't actually gotten around to asking that Chris out, I thought she might give me a try. Um, but she was really quite insistent. And since she was sick, she said, would I mind taking the note and putting it in the right Chris's mailbox? <sighs> and I thought, well, if I'm a good sport about it and it doesn't work out between the two of them, maybe she'll remember and give me a call. So I did it. Now, 
I took this as a sign that my strategy was working. <laughs> it was just a matter of patience. So a few more months go by, and there is the knock on the door, and I open it, and there is a woman with a whole bunch of groceries, and she's pushing past me, and she says, do you mind? These are really heavy. I need to put them down in the kitchen. And I move aside, and I say, I have no idea who you are. And she says, you don't know me, but you're Chris, right? Whoa, yes I am. Yay, words out. So <clears throat> then she says, I'm friends with your girlfriend. Oh my God. The other Chris, two doors down, and so she went. I finally realized that the universe would continue to be confused as long as the other Chris lived two doors down. So I realized I would actually have to leave the house if I wanted something to happen. So when February came and it was Valentine's Day, I had heard that Hugo House was having a dating game program. And I thought, sure, why not? I'll go early, I'll watch people coming, maybe I'll see someone interesting in the audience, who knows? And so I get there early, not realizing that the hosts are going to be coming out and trying to get the early people to be contestants on the show, which I really didn't want, but okay, I said I'd be one of the ones who answer the questions behind the screen. I was number three. She said number three, it's me, I am actually going to go on a date, yay! So we went on a date and we got talking and she said, hey, would you like to go to this like class with me? It's called Women Who Run With Chocolate. <laughs> and I thought, I love women. I love running. I really love chocolate. Yes, sign me up. Okay, I probably should have asked a few more questions first. Um, so we get there and um, I discover that um, uh, by the end, the last exercise is standing there with your eyes closed, listening to drum beats and thinking about something other than chocolate that you really want. Okay, and I realized that I liked being physical and I wanted to dance. And she realized she wanted to sell all her stuff and move to Florida. And so I am still single and Chris still lives two doors down with her wife, Rebecca Brown. Ah, but I did learn to dance, and I have had an excellent uh, relationship with dance ever since. And I still love investigating the little mysteries in my life. Thank you. <laughs>